which type of professor do you most enjoy having? You know, I'm gonna go with the one who's a very fascinating lecturer because otherwise I just associate and daydream the entire time. <laughs> what type of coursework do you enjoy the most? Readings. What would you be most flattered to be complimented on? Any of these? <laughs> okay, I got Annabeth. All right, so I figured if I'm going to make this personality quiz to give to you all so you can figure out whether you're Annabeth or Hermione, I should probably take it too. I just got Annabeth, so you should go take it right now too. The link is in the caption below, so just click that and you can take this personality quiz, which I'd recommend doing before watching the rest of the video so that you can go into this knowing which character you most embody when it comes to your habits as a student. All right, so Hermione Granger versus Annabeth Chase. The reason I chose these two characters is because they're both very popular YA fiction, um, young female protagonists who are also both Worms. I mean, well, not protagonists. They're like the best friend of the protagonist, which you know if you're watching this video. <laughs> they both have the same type of intellect, but they use it in different ways. And they also have different ends with their different means. I'm gonna go into more depth because I know this sounds very vague right here. But basically both are really talented at thinking coherently um, amidst a pandemonium. And that's why, you know, Harry and Percy respectively need Hermione and uh, Annabeth because otherwise they would get nowhere. And they really just need Annabeth and Hermione's intelligence in order to get anywhere in the books. And another thing is obviously they're both very bookish and they enjoy learning and studying, which is why I feel like anyone in this world can be categorized as either an Annabeth or Hermione. Like, you're either one or the other, and this video will tell you what it means to be one. So I'm basically gonna go over different ways that um, Annabeth and Hermione approach different things uh, that come up, and then in reference to those, I'm going to use them to discuss like what you should do as a student, depending on if you're a Hermione or an Annabeth. First, approaching an unknown. In the context of Harry Potter or Percy Jackson, this might be a monster or a villain, a bad guy. Uh, in real life, we unfortunately don't get to have these heroic battles. So approaching an unknown in the context of real life will be something like, encountering a topic in your homework that you don't recognize from any of the lectures or anything. So um, much smaller scale, you know, it's not an Avengers level threat or anything, <laughs> you know, still applicable to the way in which Hermione and Annabeth use their different types of thinking to go about solving this unknown. So Annabeth tends to use her intuition and then transforms this into a strategic way of thinking. She's much more cognizant of danger than Percy and Grover are. Like for example, she's the one to be suspicious of Auntie M. By the way, this video does have spoilers. When they go see Auntie M, who's obviously Medusa, Annabeth is the one to figure that out first and to um, even just like kind of feel that inkling of something is not right right here. Hermione on the other hand is less about intuition because she tends to put something into the context of what she knows and then she applies that knowledge that she already has to the situation to try to figure it out. For example in Chamber of Secrets she's the one to go to the library and then figure out that the basilisk is using the pipes to get around Hogwarts. So in approaching an unknown the difference between them is that Annabeth uses more intuition, Hermione uses um, more like previously acquired knowledge. And then tackling a Task. So once you've like encountered that unknown, when you actually go to work with the problem, uh, do you do it more in the Annabeth way, which has to do with confidence, or the Hermione way, which is a little bit more ruthless? So the, this one actually has to do with the flaws. So this is another good way to tell like which type you are, because Annabeth, as we know, has hubris um, from Sea of Monsters. We learn when she goes to like listen to the siren song that she believes that she can do anything better than anyone else. So if you're more like Annabeth, you might be prone to not narcissism, but just more so the feeling that you can do it. Like you have no qualms about doing something and you just know you're going to do it successfully. Hermione on the other hand, as we can see, can be a little bit more ruthless, especially in the books. You know, she traps Rita Skeeter in a jar as a beetle. She um, does that newt level charm uh, on the Dumbledore's army sign up so that anyone who tattles on the group will have sneak written across their forehead in boils. <laughs> so like, she's not afraid to um, go to extreme measures to get done what needs to be done about a problem. Once they've tackled these problems, Hermione and Annabeth also have different ways of going about like actually finding a solution to that problem. One of my favorites for Annabeth is when she helps uh, Frank get out of the Chinese finger trap in Heroes of Olympus. She doesn't just like help him get out of the finger trap, she pulls up on her laptop a model of a finger trap and like this is obviously a plot point because later she uses the model in order to trick Arachne, but the, the point still stands that she actually pulls up a model to show the solution to the Chinese finger trap. Hermione on the other hand when solving a problem turns to logic and logic like in a non-theory based way. And, and the reason I say this is because she despises Umbridge's way of teaching, right? Because Umbridge, she has a very theory based um, application of defense against the dark arts. So the students are like, well, how the heck are we going to 
fight Voldemort if we're only learning theory. Order the Phoenix plot in a nutshell. The logic puzzle, um, when they're trying to find the Sorcerer's Stone. They go into the room with all those different little potions. Hermione's able to solve the riddle in order to get through to the next room through those flames. And the point is, is that she like recognizes the limits of theory and sees the uses of logic. I, 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 don't, I feel like I'm not um, explicating this quite clearly, but I guess these are just the two different ways that they can, they both kind of solve problems. And then also um, the way that they'll strive for something. So like something new, looking ahead to the future. The Annabeth type of person will seek for knowledge and learning. She, Percy and Grover arrive at the Lotus Casino, she turns on National Geographic. And then Hermione, on the other hand, she strives for success. So like we learn in book three that her bogart is her failing all of her owl exams, even though she ends up getting like all outstandings, except for one exceeds expectations, which really devastates her. But she basically feels better through her perfectionism in meeting her own standards that she sets out for herself. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. I feel like as I was going through that, that was really boring. So I apologize. Um, but basically now if you are an Annabeth, this is what you should do as a student. It's really important that you cultivate your desire to learn more by not settling for less. Like don't appease others by learning less than you actually would. Don't take a class because all your friends are pressuring you to take it or something. Do the class that you want to take that you're interested in because you're going to do best if you're learning something, if you're the Annabeth type. For example, when they come across a Sphinx who asks them not riddles, but instead just like really easy trivia questions, like what is the capital of Bulgaria? Annabeth gets insulted and she's like, why are you insulting my intelligence? Like, give me a real riddle here. I want to, you know, pass the Sphinx according to like tradition. She gives herself opportunities to expand her intelligence as often as she can. Also in situations that demand leadership, you're going to have this natural knack for leading others. Use that to your advantage and like put yourself in situations that allow your penchant for leading to flourish. Like Annabeth leads her capture the flag team and she does very well at it. Don't shy away from opportunities to lead others. Like whether it's something like capture the flag or you know a research project with other students. Keep track of your ideas so when you're laying in bed thinking about something or you're in the shower and a really deep thought comes to mind or even a dream that you have it's so important that you keep track of all your ideas like Annabeth one of her prized possessions is Daedalus's laptop that she gets because it has a bunch of inventions and ideas on it. So if you can keep track of your ideas, I think that that would be just really good for your own sense of creativity because you have ideas all the time coming at you. Now one thing to watch out for is your own self-dependence. Annabeth takes a long time to warm up to Percy because primarily she doesn't want to be seen as weak in front of the other campers. So like at Camp Half-Blood when she like finds out Percy is alive, she hides her emotions. You know, she doesn't wear them on her sleeve because she doesn't want people to think of her as emotionally vulnerable. And um, that's just one thing to kind of watch out for is to make sure you're not too independent in that sense. Allow yourself to lean on others, don't take on everything for yourself. Uh, and that again ties back to hubris, the idea that you can do everything better than everyone else. You know, you don't have to like go through everything in your life alone, so make sure that you take the time to depend on others. Now in regards to studying itself, tailor as much as you can to your interests. So after Mount Olympus gets wrecked and um, they need to rebuild it, Annabeth is the one who is hired basically to redesign Mount Olympus, which is obviously an incredible experience for her because she's fascinated by arc uh, I was about to say archaeology by architecture and this is like her dream job she gets to do her dream job so if you want to like enjoy yourself in life which um i don't know why you wouldn't make sure you're doing what you're interested in um and this sounds like such basic advice like obviously everyone wants to do something that they're interested in but don't go into something because it's easier or you feel like there's less uh, career competition something like that don't go into it for those reasons go into a career because you genuinely want to be doing it on a more general note don't take classes that you don't like you know, if you're taking a bunch of classes and you're not enjoying them, maybe it means you need to switch your major. Yeah, if you're a student and you're an Annabeth, just keep these things in mind and I think that it'll make your life as a student hopefully more manageable, easier, fun, all of the above. <laughs> now, if you're a Hermione Granger, um, use your determination as much as you can because you are going to be a very passionate person who goes after goals, takes on challenges, like you do not back down from anything. You have an aptitude for seeing things through till the end, so take advantage of that um, because you're just such a thorough person. Person. For example, once at my high school, we had a motivational speaker come in and he basically told us to like think of our opportunities as lemons. I don't know, I think I'm butchering what his speech was about, but basically the gist was like squeeze like a lemon <laughs> everything that's at your fingertips to do. If you're a Hermione, take on these things because 
you are going to get it done. So if you start it, like you're probably going to finish and that, that'll that just be another accomplishment under your belt. Like if you're not sure whether you're up to it, you might as well try. And like, obviously don't be afraid to quit if it's too much for you, but just try as many things as you can. Be prepared to have many connections in your life because you probably tend to naturally help others, um, whether it's just because like out of obligation or because you genuinely want to. But like, as we see, Hermione is constantly helping Harry and Ron with their homework at last minute times. And she's also in class, like sneaking help to Neville, especially around Snape. And the thing about this is you're going to get a lot of connections in life because you have that tendency to just help people and take it on as your responsibility to help people. People will naturally trust you and they're going to count on you because they know that you get things done. And the only thing that you need to like kind of be wary about is that people will probably try to walk over you as well and take advantage of the fact that they know you get things done. Trust your moral compass. As much as Hermione has the reputation of a rule follower because of her personality in Sorcerer's Stone, she honestly is not a rule follower. She breaks the rules so many times throughout the books in order to help Harry and Ron for what she believes is the greater good. If you're Hermione, you probably have a really strong moral compass and guiding principles, so just trust those and um, you probably know what the right thing to do is, so just don't doubt yourself, I guess. Beware of taking on too much. So I know I said already, do as much as you can, try everything. Also just be um, cautious of taking on too much because Hermione has mental breakdowns in Prisoner of Azkaban because she takes on too much. She has the time turner so that she can take an inhuman workload. And because of that emotional strain, especially because of the fact that her friendship with Harry and Ron is not going well during the book, she takes it upon herself to also help Hagrid with Buckbeak's uh, legal case and she is constantly prepping for that. So if you're a Hermione, you probably have that tendency when you're stressed to just keep doing things that are productive. Like you can't stop being productive if you're a Hermione. So um, make sure that you also just take the time for yourself if you're feeling stressed and don't take on everything because you don't have to take on everything as much as you feel like you need to. And this is because you're a perfectionist. Like even when you're exhausted, you're just taking on more and more and more. So in regards to studying, make it as real world as possible. Because like I said earlier with the logic puzzle and everything, Hermione um, applies things to real life. She's not about the theoretical or the abstract. I mean, we see how much she hates divination because it doesn't have uh, tangible results for her. She likes to have a very concrete goal in mind that she can visualize the outcome to. You probably don't do as well dealing with the intangible as well, so make sure all of the goals that you set for yourself are perceptible. Work towards a future that you're constantly visualizing so you don't like lose sight of it. And you do well with challenges, so make yourself challenges. Give yourself a goal or a future to work towards because once you like set your mind to it, you're going to actually get it done. Yeah, I guess that's the I guess that's the general idea of what you should do if you are a Hermione type of student. So um, yeah, like I said, I just thought this was a kind of a fun idea to entertain because I feel like everyone is either a, an Annabeth or a Hermione in this world. And um, again, if you haven't already, if you decided to watch the video first, don't forget to go take the personality quiz in the caption below. And I hope it provides some insight as to what your habits are as a student and just as a human in general. I feel like this definitely applies beyond the scope of education. But thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week.